Digital broadcast live from Rajpath. I am Bhuvan Apurvajha, and along with my colleagues Tanvi Taneja, Kaushik Roy, and D. Andrew, on behalf of the entire Akashvani and Prasar Bharati Parivar, we extend our heartiest felicitations and warmest greetings to you on our 72nd Republic Day. Friends, the dipping mercury levels at Rajpath in New Delhi are no damper for the pride, the palpable energy, and enthusiasm in all present here on this auspicious day, braving the severe winter chill to participate in the nation's commemoration of the day when it was established as a republic. As we prepare to bring to you this grand spectacle, in a short while from now, we will take you to the National War Memorial at India Gate, where Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi will lead the nation in paying solemn tributes to the martyrs by laying a wreath on behalf of a grateful nation. Accompanying the Prime Minister, will be Raksha Mantri Sri Rajnath Singh, the three services chiefs General Manoj Mukund Narwane, Admiral Karambir Singh and Air Marshal Rakesh Kumar Singh Bhadoria. Also expected to be present are the Chief of the Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat and Defence Secretary Dr. Rajay Kumar. My colleague D. Andrew will be bringing to you the second by second update of all the proceedings from the solemn function to be held at the National War Memorial. Thereafter, ladies and gentlemen, the most spectacular pageant of the Republic will unfold before us on this majestic, hallowed boulevard, the Rajpath. Soon will come the horses clip-clopping, the young women and men in uniform energetically stamping their feet on the asphalt and swinging their arms in unison to the rhythmic beating of the drums. The military bands playing rousing nationalistic tunes, the rolling tanks, the thundering aircrafts, ornate tableau, showcasing a unity in diversity and so much more. Oh, and did I mention that India's pride and adversaries envy the Rafal will make its debut appearance in front of us later this morning. Stay tuned as we bring to you continuous coverage of the celebration of our democratic aspirations and ideals from Rajpath, New Delhi, live and exclusive on All India Radio and Prasar Bharati. Namaskar and welcome to Rajpath. It's a chilly but lovely winter morning and as I look down before me at the lush green lo lawns running alongside the magnificent ceremonial boulevard of Rajpath in the heart of Delhi, I can see expectant spectators who are patiently waiting to witness the splendid pageantry of India's 72nd Republic Day Parade. I, Tanvi Taneja, on behalf of the entire Akashwani Parivar, extends to all our listeners the heartiest felicitations on this 72nd Republic Day of our great country. 26 January, a date etched in history for every Indian. A date that celebrates the coming into force of the Indian Constitution. The date when India was declared a sovereign democratic republic. A date we honour because the Indian Constitution conferred individual liberties on every citizen of this great land while also expecting us to fulfil our duties to our motherland. Of course, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, many things have changed across the globe over the last year. The Republic Day Parade is also a little different this year since it's going to be in a sense a leaner and shorter parade. For instance, this year the parade will culminate at the National Stadium instead of the Red Fort as is traditional. The spectators are also a little different, at least visually, because each one of them is wearing a mask as they follow the COVID-19 preventive protocols while they patiently wait to witness the splendour and gaiety of the Republic Day celebrations. Well, it's not just the masks. The spectators are also following social distancing norms, sitting at an appropriate distance from one another. And uh, as compared to the over 1,15,000 spectators last year, there are only 25,000 viewers this year. And to tell you a little bit more about what's going to be new, or what's in store in this year's Republic Day Parade, the newly inducted Rafale fighter aircraft, which has tremendously added to the firepower of the Indian Air Force, will make its day 
debut in the fly past this year and for the first time a woman fighter pilot flight lieutenant bhavna kant who is among the first three women fighter pilots of the indian air force will be part of the republic day parade a tri service contingent from neighboring bangladesh has been invited to participate in the parade to commemorate the 50 years of diplomatic ties between the two countries this participation is also significant as this year marks 50 years of the liberation war of bangladesh the indian air force's vintage dakota aircraft will also part or will be part of the fly past the tableau of ladakh will make its debut as a ut showcasing the iconic thikse monastery the tableau of uttar pradesh will have for the first time a replica of the upcoming shri ram temple this and there will be a lot more on grand display here on rajpath so stay tuned to all india radio yes absolutely tanvi and uh, we can see just uh, before us uh, from the saluting days the national emblem of india the lion capital of sarnath very beautifully bedecked and also very colorfully decorated with a map of india and uh, people sitting around and the floral arrangements are a feast to the eyes we can see many dignitaries already seated in the areas designated for them millions of freedom fighters friends under the leadership of mahatma gandhi had fought a non-violent battle against the british to become independent in 1947 next year we would be celebrating 75 years of our independence a proud achievement indeed netaji subhash chandra bose whose 125th birth anniversary celebrations have just begun on parakram day had play a key role in uniting the nation against foreign oppression social reformers like swami vivekananda jyotiba phule gurzada venkata parao shri narayan guru and many others shaped india's social transformation in the last seven decades the indian republic has come a long way in establishing herself as a global power today we are a mighty military nation but also we have a very outward looking and helpful foreign policy built solidly on developmental agenda this was visible to the world during the covid-19 pandemic india provided help both medical and otherwise to more than 150 countries from we have become a net exporter of personal protection equipment kits and the made in india vaccines against covid-19 have been given to as diverse nations as brazil morocco seychelles nepal and bangladesh and as brazilian president had said the vaccine was just like the sanjivani booty to our friends in the latin american country indeed uh, yes and uh, along uh, with the, the note of thanks uh, the brazilian president jair messia bolsonaro also tweeted a picture of uh, lord hanuman uh, carrying the uh, life saving herbs and juni booty uh, which was symbolic of the covid vaccines uh, and he even gave the message uh, dhanyawad india and thank you india in portuguese uh, as well and uh, to tell you how the area around the sal- uh, saluting days looks uh, right now as always it's decked in booming lilies daisies orchids rajnigandhas and roses apur isn't it looking really splendid it's absolutely splendid the sun has begun to shine and rightly so as symbolic of a new india in a post covid era the year 2020 proving historically gloomy time for almost the entire world due to global covid-19 india standing united in the fight against covid-19 by adopting strategic methodologies and the much needed collective behavioral transformation at every level we have come through quarantines and lockdowns having maintained social distancing self masking sanitizing despite disruptions and confinements india became the world's pharmacy during the covid-19 and supplied hydroxychloroquine to more than 100 countries globally thanks to our talented scientists for rapid progress in producing the life saving vaccine india started with the world's largest vaccination program on 16th january 2021 in which nearly 30 crore people will be vaccinated over the next few months covid-19 pandemic halted normal human activities and paralyzed economies turning the crisis into opportunity 
Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi gave a clarion call for Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan by announcing an economic package of Rs 20 lakh crore to put the economy on high growth trajectory. The economy saw many new initiatives in health, economy, science and technology, education, agriculture and infrastructure. True. The rays of the morning sun are falling gently on Rajpath as if in kind benediction to the Republic on India's 72nd Republic Day anniversary. Rajpath was cloaked in mist uh, this early morning, but it's an, uh, no more misty here. It is really sun is shining bright. Yes, absolutely. The sun is shining brightly on the Rajpath and as Bhuvan said, we are on the cusp of becoming a five trillion economy in just about a couple of hours, years. Also, we would like to mention here that uh, during the pandemic, the government provided free rations, the largest of its kind anywhere in the world, to about 80 crore Indians. The Rajpath as uh, my colleague Tanvi said, is all decked up for uh, today's Republic Day parade and pageantry. This occasion comes but just once a year. Rajpath is today a papuri of India. All her hues, her myriad culture, traditions are on view here. In just a short while from now, the Honorable Prime Minister will be going across the Rajpath to the National War Memorial. Today we see uh, dignitaries, a galaxy of dignitaries here who are present here including the Union Home Minister Shri Amit Shah, the External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar and other ministers. And uh, to bring you the details about the events at the National War Memorial, we now take you over to our team at the National War Memorial. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you, Kaushik. This is D. Andrew reporting from the National War Memorial. This is only the second year of the War Memorial since it was dedicated by the nation to the Armed Forces of India on 25th February 2019 by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. The sun is shining bright on the National War Memorial and Rajpath. It is a very serene atmosphere over here as the nation remembers our brave hearts who sacrificed their lives for our motherland. It's quite cold over here, but the sun, of course, it has brought about little relief to the officials who have been standing out since night. And, of course, they must be feeling a bit warm. And it's quite beautiful over here. The, the dignitaries at the National War Memorial are waiting for the arrival of the Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, who will be laying a wreath at the Amar Jawan Jyoti. The inter-services contingent, led by Major Vikas Sangwan of the Indian Army, stand in attention at the Amar Jawan Jyoti. On his arrival at the National War Memorial, the Prime Minister will be received by the Defence Minister Sri Rajnath Singh, Defence Secretary Sri Ajay Kumar, Chief of the Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat, Chief of Navy Admiral Karambir Singh, Chief of Air Force Air Marshal Rakesh Kumar Singh Badodia, and Chief of the Indian Army General Manoj Mukund Narvane. A war memorial is a building, monument, statue or an edifice to celebrate a war or victory or to commemorate those who laid down their lives or were injured in the war. It provides an opportunity to the visitors to develop a conscious connect with the site, with the institution and people in whose memory the structure is built. The memorial attempts to invoke a deep and moving experience and serves as a symbol of inspiration for future generations. Since independence, more than 25,000 soldiers of the Indian Armed Forces have made the supreme sacrifice to defend the sovereignty and integrity of our country. The National War Memorial thus represents the gratitude of a nation to its armed forces. The memorial will help strengthen the sense of belonging, high moral values, sacrifice and national pride in our citizens. It shall stand testimony to the sacrifices made by our soldiers during various conflicts, United Nations operations, humanitarian assistance and disaster response as operations since independence. It will also showcase the rich military traditions of our armed forces as a shining example of selfless service to the nation. For the creation of the National War Memorial, 
A two-stage global competition to select a suitable design for the memorial was held on 2016-17. Shri Yogesh Chandrasen of Webe Design Lab Chennai won the global competition for his design and was appointed as the project consultant. Mrs. NCC Limited was awarded the contract on 25th January 2018 and headquarters integrated defence staff executed the project on behalf of the Ministry of Defence. Either I will come back after hoisting the tricolour or I will come back wrapped in it or I will be back for sure. These are the words of Captain Vikram Batra. A great sense of pride and victory at the cost of their life. He was one of the recipients of the Paramvir Chakra. The memorial is a gestation on the idea of rebirth of those unsung heroes through their stories, journeys and struggles translated as spatial expressions. A culmination to the historical Rajput extending through the India Gate, the National War Memorial is an open landscaped public place spread over 42 acres in the sea hexagon. Mostly invisible but strongly present, it is a semi-subterranean design remaining a people's place but with a different dimension of emotional weight. Progressive act of protection, sacrifice, bravery and becoming an immortal translate as a concentric arrangement of which the Tyag Chakthru holds the name of each fallen soldier who become another brick in the nation's defensive wall. It's very quiet over here at the National War Memorial and uh, you can see that the inter-services regiment, they are standing in attention, waiting for the arrival of the Prime Minister. The obelisk, that is the war memorial, the Amar Jawan Jyoti, which is the flames of the eternal soldier at the bottom of the stump of the obelisk, at the center of the monument. The flame symbolizes the immortality of the spirit of the fallen soldiers and the promise that the nation will never forget the sacrifices. And towards my right, there are the three flags of the three services, that is the Navy, Air Force and the Army, along with the Indian tricolor fluttering in the mild breeze which is blowing across the war memorial and the Rajpath. It's a beautiful and a very serene atmosphere, bright atmosphere with the sh sun shining bright. And uh, it's a real floral tribute to our eyes when you see the flowers which are arranged right near the Amar Jawan Jyoti. And right on top of the stump or the obelisk is the lion capital of Sarnath on which is written Satyamev Jayate, which means truth triumphs. The flame is burning brightly down, flanked by another four flames, each representing the four corners of the country, that is east, west, north, south. And on the obelisk, just near the flame is written Amar Jawan. The eternal soldier. There is a lot of floral, lot of flowers right near the this thing. We have the lilies and uh, the yellow, the flowers representing the Indian tricolor. That is red, white, and green, all arranged in a certain order, which indicates the Indian tricolor. And there are a lot of pots kept from where the Prime Minister will walk down the stairs towards the Amar Jawan. There are four chakras, the memorial has distinct schemes of concentric circles. The first one is the Amar Chakra, which I just told you. And then we have the Virta Chakra, which is the next one. The second circle depicts the bravery of Indian forces in the form of a covered gallery that exhibits six murals crafted in bronze, depicting valiant battles across actions of in the Indian armed forces. And to my left, far off, I can see the Prime Minister approaching the Amar Jawan Jyoti. He is flanked by the Chief of Defence Staff and the Chief of the Three Armed Forces. He walks slowly towards the Amar Jawan and he is wearing a Kesariya turban 
That is one beauty about our Prime Minister, every time he wears a turban, whenever he comes for these important occasions, he wears his mask and a grey colour kurta, a grey colour half coat is wearing, is accompanied by the Defence Minister and the Chief of the Defence Staff slowly walks towards and now you see that the Prime Minister walks and the Defence Minister is accompanying the Prime Minister, the Defence Secretary, Shri Ajay Kumar, the Defence Minister, Shri Rajnath Singh. The Prime Minister walks down the stairs towards the Amar Jawan flame and he joins the wreath bearers who are waiting for him to come so that as he comes, they'll have a slow march towards the eternal flame. The wreath bearers on the front and the Prime Minister walks with them followed by the four chiefs. He climbs up the stairs followed by the chiefs of the armed forces, the wreath bearers. The Prime Minister accompanies them and places the wreath right in front of the Amar Jawan. And the wreath bearers walk in opposite directions and take the position next to the Amar Jawan flame. The Prime Minister walks back, stands in uh, attention, and now the Salami Shastra, the present arms, is given by the company commander, Major Vikas Sangwan of the Indian Army. And now the Shrok Shastra, the reverse arms. Bugler sound the last push.
ordering the Samadhi Shastra after the two minutes silence and the bugler sound the rolls and with that marks the completion of the two minutes silence. That brings us to the end of the retling ceremony at the Amar Jawan Jyoti by the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister stands in attention as a mark of respect. He bows and then is led away by the chiefs of the different defense forces and Chief of the Defence Staff, General Bipin Rawat. The Prime Minister tells Namaste, maintaining protocol of the pandemic, of not shaking hands, and is walks away slowly towards the table where he will be signing, giving his comments, his remarks on the ceremony at the National War Memorial. He slowly climbs up the stairs, accompanied by the Home Minister, I beg your pardon, the Defence Minister, General Bipin Rawat, Chief of the Defence Staff, Chief of Navy, Admiral Karambir Singh, Chief of Air Force, Air Marshal Rakesh Kumar Singh Badodia, and Chief of the Indian Army, General Manoj Kumar, Manoj Mukun Narwane. The Prime Minister moves slowly, accompanied by these important delegates, towards the visitor's book. The visitor's book is at quite a distance from here, and uh, there you will be flanked by the 61 cavalry, cavalry. Prime Minister walks slowly, and uh, this is his second time, and then 48 years, it was done at the Amar Jawan Jyoti at India Gate, and this is only the second time that the ceremony is being held at the N National War Memorial. It's a beautiful, serene atmosphere over here, and that has been maintained till now, till the Prime Minister came, laid the wreath as he walks towards the visitor's book. He's flanked by the other officials, the important officials who came with him up to the National War Memorial to lay the wreath. And the Prime Minister sits and while signing is talking to the Defence Minister and to the three chiefs of the Indian Defence Forces. He is flanked by them as they wait for the Prime Minister to give his comments. And from there he will slowly move towards his motorcade which will be waiting for him to take him to the saluting dais on Rajpath. Prime Minister is signing the register and all the officials even here at the Amar Chakra they are all waiting in attention waiting for the Prime Minister to go and once they get the order from the contingent leader inter-services contingent leader Major Vikas Sangwan of the Indian Army they may move and we are bringing everything to you on Akashwani the Prime Minister, after signing the register, saying Namaste to everyone, and he slowly moves towards his motorcade. He's followed by the three chiefs of the Indian Defence Forces and Chief of Defence Staff, General Bipin Rawat. The Prime Minister moves slowly towards his motorcade. It's waiting for him. And near his motorcade also there are some officials who are waiting for him. And he tells Namaste. And as the Prime Minister moves towards 
his motorcade and he, as he gets into the vehicle, I take you over to the saluting days. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. That was Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi leading the nation in paying solemn tributes to the martyrs by laying a wreath on behalf of a grateful nation for the fallen soldier, the unknown soldier, the ever-present soldier who has made the supreme sacrifice in service of the nation and her people. And whilst the carcade of Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Raksha Mantri and other dignitaries makes its way to the main saluting days, we prepare to witness the grand spectacle showcasing the defense capability of our nation coupled with the latest achievements and initiative undertaken alongside its rich and diverse social and cultural heritage. And in a short while from now, the oldest and senior most regiment of the Indian Army will be arriving here escorting Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovindji. We'll also have Honorable Vice President, Sri M. Vankaya Naiduji, arriving here at the main saluting days and thereafter we'll begin this celebration of our democratic ideals and aspirations, this celebration of our democracy, this celebration of the people and its power. Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned into All India Radio. We are coming to you live from Rajpath on our 72nd Republic Day. Stay with us. Yes, and if you haven't tuned in to us on your radio sets yet, you can also catch our running commentary on various digital platforms of ours at Akashwani AIR on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube and of course through our official News on AIR app. And as we wait for the entourage of the Prime Minister, as always, there will be a great grand display here on Rajpath. There will be 21 gun salute to our Honorable President and followed by the march pasts by the contingents of the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, the glorious military bands, the magnificent folk and classical dances and of course the grand finale, the thrilling fly past the country's military might and the great colourful magical cultural mosaic that is India will be on grand display here on Rajpath. Yes, you are right, Tanvi. And uh, from the saluting days, we can see the lion capital of Sarnath, which is placed on a high pedestal representing a stupa. And this is something which uh, is indeed a very mesmerizing sight behind it are these grand trees of uh, Rajpath that adds to the aura the regal look and uh, we also have a combined military band of one electrical and mechanical engineer center Sikandrabad who will be playing the national anthem and the cavalry brigade and uh, slowly we see the arrival of various dignitaries also here at the Rajpath the combined pipes and drums of the Madras Regimental Center and RVC would be led by Naib Subedar Pradeshan and they will play Quick March Vijay. We now see the arrival of the Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal RKS Bhadoria, who has been escorted by senior officers of the Indian Air Force to the saluting days. The Air Chief will await the arrival of the high dignitaries. The Chief of Navy, Admiral Karambir Singh, has also arrived at the saluting days. He has been smartly saluted by his officers. And now we see the arrival of the Chief of Army Staff, General Manoj Mukund Narwane, who is also coming to the saluting days to take his place and they will be receiving the Honorable Prime Minister, the Honorable Vice President and Honorable Rashtrapati. General Bipin Rawat, the Chief of Defense Staff, has also arrived at the saluting days. He has been greeted by the Army Chief, the Naval Chief and the Chief of Air Force and they are now standing at ease to welcome the dignitaries. We now see also the arrival of uh, Honorable Raksha Mantri, Sri Rajnath Singh, dressed 
in his traditional white kurta pajama and a black bandgala coat draped with a shawl and bhuvan and tanvi now we see the arrival of uh, two soldiers two jawans of uh, indian army who will be helping in unfurling the tricolor meanwhile the motorcade of the honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi has just made its entry into the rajpath and his vehicle will be coming to a halt just before the saluting days where we are located there is a huge round of applause here that is expectantly going up our beloved prime minister is very much a man of the masses and uh, everyone is uh, awaiting to have a glimpse of him as our colleague d andrew mentioned at the national war memorial that the prime minister began the solemn proceedings of the day by paying tributes at the national war memorial prime minister's vehicle is slowly inching its way towards the saluting days and uh, it is now coming to a stop right in front of us due to the protocols we see that social distancing has been maintained honorable raksha mantri shri rajnath singh will now receive the honorable prime minister the security personnel have now opened the doors of the prime ministerial vehicle and prime minister narendra modi wearing a kesariya turban and a grey jacket a cream colored kurta is greeting the chief of defense staff the chief of army staff the chief of naval staff and the chief of indian air force he has been escorted to the saluting days by honorable raksha mantri shri rajnath singh they are ex exchanging pleasantries as they await the arrival of uh, the honorable vice president of india shri muppavarappu venkaiya naidu indeed uh, kaushik i can uh, see honorable prime minister moving to the left of uh, the main saluting days to what is uh, called the president's box and greeting all the dignitaries uh, present there i can spot uh, several senior cabinet ministers from government of india diplomats and heads of missions all present here on this auspicious day on this momentous day of a 72nd republic day prime minister along with raksha mantri making his way towards uh, all the dignitaries greeting them with folded hands as the prime minister takes his time out to greet uh, i can spot uh, honorable home minister shri amit shah shri kiran rijiju shri arjun ram meghawal senior ministers from government of india senior secretaries all present here and the prime minister now slowly making his way back to the base of the main saluting days where present are the three service chiefs the chief of defense staff the defense secretary and we have the prime minister walking slowly but surely towards the main base of the saluting days all the dignitaries audience are all wearing a mask and following the covid-19 protocols prime minister now standing at the base of the saluting days to now welcome the honorable vice president of the country m venkaiya naidu both greeting each other again with a namaste vice president of india has arrived yes honorable vice president and the prime minister exchanging greetings prime minister and uh, vice president now will be waiting at the base of the main saluting days as we await the arrival of the presidential cavalcade and there it is suswagatam that's the queue honorable president of india making his way i can spot him coming from afar along with his cavalcade and the presidential bodyguards all coming together it's a sight to see ceremonial traditional and yet so classy to look at yes indeed apurv this is so much uh, steeped in history and tradition anand shankar's uh, evergreen song of welcome 
Swagatam Suswagatam composed just before the 1982 Asian Games that were conducted here in Delhi is always the regular cue that announces the arrival of the presidential cavalcade and also the motorcade. This is a site which we generally don't see every time but only on the 26th of January and uh, Apurva and Tanvi now we can see those steeds which are 15 and a half hands uh, tall and uh, very shortly the cavalcade will arrive here and uh, the first lady of the country Srimati Savita Kovind has arrived at the saluting days indeed Kaushik the first lady being uh, greeted by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and yes. Rajput resonating with the sound of hooves yes. the mist here lifting a little to reveal men on mounds in Jodhpuris and maroon taras men in rich ceremonial uniforms and braid leading and escorting the presidential cavalcade their lanced pennants fluttering in the cool calm morning breeze here at Rajpath. Yes, dressed in red tunics, white breeches, holding lances with pennons in their hand, resplendent in full regalia, slowly approaching the saluting dance now. In perfect synchroni synchronization, the president's bodyguards. The president of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind's cavalcade, the presidential limousine now, has almost reached the base of the saluting dance. The vehicle of the President of India, Honorable Sri Ramnath Kovinji, has come to a stop just in front of us at the saluting base. The sun is shining brilliantly on this tarmac called Rajpath, and uh, the President's bodyguards have opened the doors of the presidential vehicle. President Sri Ramnath Kovind has been greeted by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and both are exchanging pleasantries and now the Honorable Prime Minister is escorting Rashtrapati ji towards the saluting days. Rashtrapati ji exchanging pleasantries with Raksha Mantri Sri Rajanath Singh and the Chief of Defense Staff General Rawat greets Rashtrapati ji and so does the Chief of Naval Staff, the Chief of Arm Army and the Air Force Chief. Rashtrapati ji is wearing a grey coloured bandgala suit and is also wearing a cap and they come and stand in front of the tricolour. Indeed, this Kaushik, as the Prime Minister makes his way along with Honourable Rashtrapati ji up the stairs, it's important that we inform you about the President's bodyguard. It's only pertinent. The President's bodyguard are unique and distinct amongst all regiments, not only in India, but also the whole world. The personnel of the regiment are all handpicked, at least all of them being six feet tall. Besides performing ceremonial duties for the President, the officers and men of the bodyguard are trained horsemen, paratroopers and tankmen. The regiment has seen action at Chushul in 1962, in the Western Theatre in 1965, and in Operation Pavan, Sri Lanka, in 1988. Yes, raised in 1773, the President's Bodyguard is the oldest and senior-most regiment of the Indian Army. Uh, Colonel Anup Tiwari on his Mount Virat and second-in-command of the regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Shardul Sibiki on his Charger Virat are there in the ceremonial escort. Risaldar Major Dilbag Singh, astride to run Vijay, is leading the division ahead of the president and trumpeter on his grey seat. And now it's time for the tricolour to be unfurled.
a 21 gun national salute was given to the national tricolor. It is of interest to know that when India became a sovereign democratic republic on 26 January 1950, a booming 31 gun salute had marked the birth of our republic to the outside world. It was years later that the 31 gun salute was replaced by a 21 gun salute. This uh, tradition of the ceremonial 21 gun salute is accorded to pay respect to our national flag and the Honorable President of India. Indeed, uh, and we are moments away from this grand spectacle that will get underway here at Rajpath in New Delhi, a celebration of our 72nd Republic Day. We have had uh, Honorable Vice President, Honorable President, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Raksha Mantri, all present here along with the three service chiefs, the Chief of Defence Staff and Defence Secretary. I can spot amongst the crowd senior ministers from Government of India, diplomatic heads of missions, all present here on this momentous day, this auspicious day, and we are moments away, ladies and gentlemen, with the parade and the cultural pageant that will get underway here shortly. Would yes, absolutely, uh, Apoorv. And also, as uh, Tanvi had been mentioning time and again, though we are in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic protocols, still there is absolute energy and enthusiasm here. There is no worry at all for people are wearing masks and maintaining social distancing though as uh, Apoorv you mentioned that uh, the senior cabinet uh, ministers and other dignitaries are present here all are sitting at a distance of do gaz yes do gaz ki duri hai zaruri in fact uh, white cotton towels uh, along with a mask uh, kit were kept uh, on these chairs we saw that while we were coming to our booth and uh, masks, sanitizers, thermal screening has been followed at this year's parade. Well, a uh, beautiful lavender colored carpeting has been done in the audience enclosures. And for the occasion, there are scores of flagpoles lining both sides of Rajpath, uh, placed equidistant from each other, proudly carrying the Indian tricolor. All the flags are fluttering gently in the wind. Yes, it is indeed a sight to see and uh, from here, just uh, beside the saluting day, so I just cannot take my eyes off the national tricolor fluttering and uh, our national emblem, the lion capital of Sarnath, just across the tricolor. This is indeed a sight to see, a sight to behold. And uh, we can now see slowly the arrival of the parade commander. Lieutenant General Vijay Kumar Mishra. Indeed, but before that, we see the first formation flying in, comprising of four Mi-17 V-5 helicopters of the 155 helicopter unit. The helicopters flying in wine glass formation, leading the fly past and trooping the national flag is commanding officer of the 155 helicopter unit, Wing Commander Nikhil Mehrotra, with squadron leader Saniket. All these uh, Mi-17 V-5 helicopters are going to shower flower petals on the spectators. In fact, they are already showering flower petals on the spectators. These helicopters are carrying the ensigns of the Indian National Flag, the Indian Army ensign, the Indian Air Force ensign and the Indian Navy ensign. Yes, Tanvi, and at this very particular moment, the Parade Commander, Lieutenant General Vijay Kumar Mishra, AVSM, GOCC, Delhi area is smartly saluting his Supreme Commander, the President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovinji. And this begins today's proceedings of March past. Following the Parade Commander is yes. the second parade in command. Yes, uh, Major General Alok Kakkar is the parade second in command. He is an alumni of the National Defence Academy, Khadak Vasala, and the Indian Military Academy, Dehradun. He was commissioned in the 2nd Battalion of the 9th Gorkha Rifles in December 1985. Yes, the parade second in command, smartly saluting the Supreme Commander of the Indian Armed Forces, Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind. Major General Alok Kakkar, a distinguished soldier with years of experience, following his parade commander, Lieutenant General Vijay Kumar Mishra. And following the parade to IC, 
are the proud winners of the highest gallantry awards, the, including the winners of the Paramvir Chakra and the Ashok Chakra. Subedar Major Yogendra Singh Yadav, Paramvir Chakra. Subedar Sanjay Kumar, Paramvir Chakra. Lieutenant Colonel D. Sri Ram Kumar, Ashok Chakra. Heroes in the truest sense of the world, standing atop shining olive gypsies of the Indian Army, a grateful nation acknowledging their selfless spirit of service and valor as they salute the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind, on this auspicious day. Yes, crowds applauding these brave and valiant Armed Forces personnel. And on the eve of Republic Day yesterday, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh launched a revamped version of the Gallantry Awards portal. Yes, www.gallantryawards.gov.in We now see the marching contingent and band of Bangladesh who have just arrived before the saluting base. Yes, these are the soldiers of the Bangladesh Army, sailors of the Bangladesh Navy and air warriors of the Bangladesh Air Force. Marching to the awakening song of Shono Ekti Mujibureen Theke Loko Mujibir, meaning listen the voice of Mujibir, which has been multiplied by hundreds and thousands of his followers, played by the marching band led by Lieutenant Colonel Benazir Ahmed. We are honored to have them for the first time in our Republic Day Parade as India and Bangladesh celebrate 50 years of the establishment of their diplomatic ties and as Bangladesh commemorates 50 years of its historic liberation. And let's also mention that among the 102 awardees of the Padma Shri Awards declared yesterday, Liberation War Fighter Lieutenant Colonel Kwasi Sajjad Ali Zaheer and musicologist Sanjida Khatun from Bangladesh have been awarded the prestigious honor. Yes, absolutely. And we now see the first contingent of the Indian Armed Forces, the 61st Cavalry, coming towards the saluting days, led by Captain Dipanshu Sharan. The 61 Cavalry is the only active service horse cavalry regiment in the world. The 61st Cavalry officers and men salute the Supreme Commander, President of India. The cavalrymen are carrying their lances and this is indeed a sight to see. Grey horses of the 61st Cavalry are indeed the pride of the regiment and also of the nation. This is so steeped in history as we say and as Bhuvan said, the hoofs and the smart trot of the steeds, the mounts, are indeed a sound to behold. Indeed, uh, Kaushik, the motto of the 61st Cavalry, Ashwa Shakti Yashobal, meaning horse power is forever supreme. And look at those brilliant, beautiful, handsome horses strutting down Rajput with such gait and ease. It's a sight to see, it's a sight to behold, one for the memories, for the ages. And following the 61st Cavalry, we have the first column in the mechanized columns in the main battle tank of the Indian Army, the T-90 Bhishma, which is being commanded by Captain Karanveer Singh Bhangu of the 54th Armored Regiment. The main battle tank is designed on the hunter-killer concept, equipped with powerful smoothbore guns and coaxial machine guns. The 54 Armored Regiments, the Iron Hides, they have the proud privilege of being the first Armored Regiment to be raised on tank T-90 profile and is the youngest ever armoured regiment to be awarded with the General Officer Commanding-in-Chief Unit Citation in 2018. The regiment being commanded by Colonel Vinod Atri. The colours of the regiment are Royal Black, Royal Red and Royal Yellow. Royal Black symbolises the firmness and Royal Red colour denotes the aggressive spirit Hence, infusing will to win, symbolizing the tradition of a warrior. Royal yellow is associated with cavalry and shines with optimism and happiness. The motto of the regiment is Sarvatra Yasho Vijay, which means glory and victory everywhere. And uh, Colonel Vinod Atri, his turret coming down, a salute to the Supreme Commander of 
India's armed forces. These mean machines of the Indian armed forces have really played a key role in securing our frontiers. Indeed, so listeners, I can only hope that the roar of these machines is coming on your radio sets and your digital devices. It's a deafening sound to be present here, but it's a proud privilege to be present here. And following the Bhishma is the ICV BMP2 Sarthi, about which my colleague Tanvi, you've got to chip in, yes? Yes, uh, the next detachment uh, is of the infantry combat vehicle BMP2 2nd Sarath, led by Captain Akshay Rastogi of the 3rd Battalion Brigade of the Gods, 1st Rajputana Rifles. The turret turning down and the soldier making a smart salute to the honorable president of the country. These mean machines, as we mentioned, uh, secure our uh, frontiers and uh, next in line is the nuclear capable deterrent Brahmos missile developed in collaboration with Russia. This is one of uh, India's peace de resistance weapon systems and a loud roar goes up Rajpath as Brahmos comes towards the saluting base. This is no mean machine. It can really, really hurt the enemies. And these weapons go a long way in keeping our deterrence policy in vogue and to counter our enemies within and outside the region. What a wonderful sight. Crowds uh, are clapping in cheer. Some of them capturing these mean machines in their mobile phones. Indeed, Everybody a is shining in example attention. of uh, Indo-Russian military cooperation. And following the Brahmos is the next detachment, the Pinaka multi-launcher rocket system of the 841 rocket regiment being led by Captain Vibhor Gulati. The Pinaka can go deep inside enemy territory and can strike deep inside enemy hearts. With a name derived from the mythological bow of Lord Shiva, Pinaka processes the same destructive power in long range. Motto of the regiment of the artillery, Sarvatra Izzato Iqbal, which means everywhere with honor and glory. Captain Vibhor Gulati smartly salutes. Honorable President of India leads his Pinakas past the main saluting days on our 72nd Republic Day here at Rajpath in New Delhi. Indeed, and the next rumble on Rajpath is of bridge laying tanks T-72 of 9 Rapid Engineer Regiment and 119 Assault Engineer Regiment led by Captain Sachit Sharma of 119 Assault Engineer Regiment and accompanied by Captain Amit Gavar of 9 Rapid Engineer Regiment. This bridge layer tank T-72 is a bridge layer as well as a tank so it does a two in one duty the turret underneath the bridge laying thing is now saluting the honorable president of india it is followed by the samvijay electronic warfare system led by corps of signals captain shubham sharma of two electric warfare battalion the system has demonstrated tremendous capabilities as a force multiplier to the fighting forces by providing high precision intelligence and insight into the adversary's battle intention. The motto of the Corps is Tivra Chokas, meaning swift and secure. Yes, indeed. And following the Samvijay is the Shilka weapon system being led by Captain Preeti Chaudhary of the 140 Air Defense Regiment. The upgraded Shilka weapon system equipped with modern radar and digital fire control computers has the ability to destroy wartime targets for low-level air defense in all weather, keeping an accurate eye on targets. The motto of Army Air Defense is Akash Shatru Jahi. Captain Preeti Chaudhary smartly saluting Honorable President of India, the Supreme Commander of Indian Armed Forces, Sri Ramnath Kovindji, as she makes her way past the main saluting days atop her upgraded Shilka. What a sight this is. Feelings of pride among us all. And now after the display of the weapons system, the marching contingents are slowly making their way 
on Rajpath. Yes, you are right, uh, Tanvi. The first marching contingent is of the Jat Regiment. They are moving step by step ahead with tradition of sacrifice. They are very strongly built soldiers. The contingent is been led by Captain Rishabh Singh Sambyal. The Jat Regiment traces its origin to the year 1795 when Calcutta militia was raised and later converted into regular infantry. And everybody is looking towards the left as approaching the saluting days. Our two advanced light helicopters, weapon system integrated, Rudra and two advanced light helicopters, Dhruv of Army Aviation in diamond formation. The Rudra formation is led by Colonel Sudipto Chaki and the other formation members are Lieutenant Colonel Amit Mehta, Lieutenant Colonel Sumit Unial and Lieutenant Colonel Vinod Kumar. Meanwhile, the Jat Regiment has smartly saluted the Supreme Commander of India's Armed Forces, the President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind. The motto of the regiment is Sangatan Vavirta and the war cry is Jat Balwan Jai Bhagwan. And the Mechanized Infantry Regimental, Se Regimental Center, Para Regimental Center, and Jot Regimental Center combined band is playing the tune now as they got the. Marching in complete unison is our next contingent of Garhwal Rifles led by Captain Rajput Saurabh Singh of the 17th Battalion Garhwal Rifles. This is 133 years old, most illustrious and decorated infantry regiment of the Indian Army. The motto of the regiment is Yudhe Krit Nishche. The war cry is Badri Vishal Lal Ki Jai. And uh, we see the enthusiasm and also the people who are assembled here around are awestruck about the professionalism and the discipline of the Indian Armed Forces. Indeed, uh, Kaushik and Lieutenant Subhayu Bosch leads the next contingent, the Mahar Regiment. The Mahar Regiment formed in 1941 in Belgaon by efforts of Baba Sahib, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar. Motto of the regiment, Yash Siddhi. War cry, Bolo Hindustan ki jai. As you rightly mentioned, Apu, this is but a sight to see. And the professionalism, the dedication and the discipline of our soldiers and men are on display here at Rajpur. Following the Mahar regiment is the combined band of Sikh Regimental Center, Assam Regimental Center and Jammu and Kashmir Rifles playing the tune Sarhad Ke Rakhwal. Yes, it is a sight to see and the sounds to remember forever. Even their footsteps are in complete unison and so are its sounds. The next Rifles Regiment contingent is led by Major Harish Thakur of 1st Battalion Jammu and Kashmir Rifles. The motto of the regiment Prashast Ranvirata War Cry Durga Mata Ki Jai. What synchronized sounds there, right? Indeed, indeed. It's a treat to watch. And to think that they have practiced for more than 600 hours. Yes! Absolutely, this takes a lot of practice and precision to be able to display this in front of the esteemed guests and the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, of course. Indeed, Tanvi. And next, I can spot the next, next uh, contingent of Bengal sappers being led by Major Piyush Sharma, Sena Medal of the 69th Engineer Regiment. The motto of the Bengal sappers, Ekta Seva Ilam Dhrita Shur Virta. And the officer 
and men of uh, Bengal Sapper smartly salute the Supreme Commander and the President of India. The Bengal Sappers are followed by a combined band of the Sikh Light Infantry Regimental Center, Ladakh Scouts Regimental Center and Artillery Center Nashik playing the tune Balidan. And of course, speaking about Balidan sacrifice, each soldier, each jawan, each airman, each seaman knows that they have, if the occasion desires, they have to give Balidan, they have to make the supreme sacrifice. The Sikh Light Infantry Regiment was dressed in Kesari colored turbans and tunics. And next we have the Territorial Army Madras contingent. They are the gallant Thambis of the Madras Regiment's Territorial Army comprising of three TA battalions led by Major Manish Verma. The war cry is Veer Madrasi Adikolla. Adikolla meaning just kill. Following the Territorial Army Madras Regiment is the Naval Brass Band led by Sumesh Ranjan, Master Chief Petty Officer Musician who are playing the beautiful Indian Navy song Jai Bharati. Yes, these are the proud sons and daughters of uh, Mother Bharati who are performing before the Supreme Commander at Virajpat. Out, chests out and heads held high. Next is Naval Brass Band. That was Lieutenant Commander Lalit Kumar leading the contingent of Indian Navy comprising 96 sailors and 4 officers. These smart leader sailors are in 12 by 8 formation. Lieutenant Commandant Sunay Fogart, Lieutenant Aditya Shukla and Sub-Lieutenant Agastya Chaudhary follow the Commandant lead. Indeed, and following the naval marching contingent is the naval tableau, Swarnim Vijay Varsh. The fore part of the tableau showcasing the Indian Navy's daring attack on Karachi Harbour in the night of 4th and 5th December 1971 by missile boats. On the sides of the tractor, the route taken by the attacking units is depicted. The trailer of the tableau showcasing the Navy's principal combatant in the 1971 war, INS Vikrant, which conducting flying operations with Seahawk and Alize aircrafts. Photos of Mahavir Chakra awardees of the war are shown on the after part of the trailer. On the sides are murals depicting the surrender ceremony, a Petya class ship, an Operation X undertaken by divers of the Indian Navy and Mukti Bahini and some other ships which took part in the war of 1971. Yes, Swarnim Vijay Varsh, that was the theme of the naval tableau. And now, following the naval tableau is the Air Force Band. They are swaying their swords in complete harmony and now they are... Now they salute to the Honorable President. Warrant Officer Ashok Kumar is leading the Air Force Band, which is playing the tune Sound Barrier Quick March. The band comprises of three drum majors and 72 musicians. Flight Lieutenant Tanik Sharma is leading the next contingent of the Indian Air Force comprising 96 airmen and 4 officers. The smartly dressed air warriors are in 12 by 8 formation. Air 
warriors are marching with rifles in Bagal Shastra while the pistols of these officers are secured in their holsters. Flight Lieutenant Apurva Yadav, Flying Officer M. Murali and Flying Officer Kutappa leading the contingent. And now in front of us comes this very smart tableau of the Indian Air Force and as you mentioned, Tanvi, the Indian Air Force tableau showcases scaled-down models of the LCA, the light combat aircraft, the light combat helicopter, the Su-30 MKI aircraft, which is the third generation, and the Rohini radar against a sky blue background. The Indian Air Force motto, touch the sky with glory. And as my dear friend Apurva says, for the airmen of India, the sky is not the limit, but like a highway. Indeed, uh, Kaushik. And now the next tableau in front of us, symbolizing India's strides in indigenous combat aircraft technologies, the tableau of DRDO and ADA. The tableau showcasing landing, takeoff, and lift operations of LCA Navy on board aircraft carrier INS Vikramaditya. LCA Navy, the first indigenous four plus generation naval fighter aircraft developed by Aeronautical Development Agency of the Department of Defense Research and Development, which is capable of ski jump takeoff but arrested recovery, called STOBAR. The tableau being commanded by Commander Abhishek C. Gawande of Indian Navy. Indian Navy and HAL have been partners and active partners during the development and testing of this aircraft. The smart tableau making its way past the main saluting days, Commander Abhishek C. Gawande saluting. Honorable President of India, on the first tableau by the DRDO that is passing by right now in front of the main saluting days here at Rajput on our 72nd Republic Day. There's a woman officer aboard this tableau, smartly saluting. Next, the second tableau of the Defence Research Development Organisation is developing uh, the anti-tank guided missile systems which play a crucial role in defeating armored tanks the anti-tank guided missile missiles tableau of drdo is showcasing full-scale models of nag helena man portable anti-tank guided missiles sant that is standoff anti-tank missile and laser guided atgm that is anti-tank guided missiles for mbt arjun an indigenous laser-guided, precision-guided munition. Yes, you are right, Tanvi. These are the next-gen missiles of India that secure our borders. And mostly, some are man-portable anti-tank, so that you just need a man to launch these mean machines to secure our borders. And they go very deep into enemy territory. Coming up next is the paramilitary and uh, auxiliary civil forces band the indian coast guard marching contingent they are the vanguards of our exclusive economic zone a maritime <laughs> these men and women guard our maritime borders and allow commercial trade maritime trade to take place it has been led by deputy commandant ashish nagar and the indian coast guard marching contingent is also having assistant commandant s deviga assistant commandant yamini godula and p kartik rao indeed and the next uh, marching band in front of us being led by inspector shamsher lal of the central reserve police force playing the tune desh ke hum hai rakshak Desh ke rakshak indeed. And now, the Central Reserve Police Force marching contingent being led by Assistant Commandant Salil Duri. The marching contingent comprising 96 personnel marching, smartly marching down Rashkar. <laughs> largest 
and one of the oldest paramilitary forces in the world, raised as the Crown's representative police in 1939, the CRPF has distinguished itself not only in combating insurgency and terrorism, but also through its duties in rescue and relief operations during natural calamities. The motto of CRPF, service and loyalty. And yes, what wonderful Firozi colored ceremonial headgear they were wearing. Next is the band of the Indo-Tibetan border police led by Bandmaster Inspector Divakar Prasad playing the famous tune Kadam Kadam Badaija. Brave and tenacious sentinels of our northern borders operate like snow leopards in temperatures up to minus 60 degrees Celsius and at altitudes of more than 18,700 feet. These ITBP men guard our borders from Jammu and Kashmir to Arunachal Pradesh. That is uh, the marching contingent of the Indo-Tibetan Border Police led by Assistant Commandant Dinesh Kumar and now approaching this saluting days is the Delhi Police Band led by Bandmaster Sub-Inspector Rajender Singh. They are smartly coming before the saluting days and uh, they are uh, saluting the Commander in Chief of India's armed forces. The Delhi police marching contingent which secures the national capital territory has been led by Assistant Commissioner of Police Akshat Kaushal IPS and they have come before the saluting base. The motto of the Delhi police is Shanti, Seva or Nyai, Peace, Service and Justice. Yes, dressed in khaki coloured tunics and breeches and red ceremonial headgear. And following the Delhi police marching contingent are the graceful camels with colourful tassels, beads and mirrors, the camel contingent of the border security force, the ship of the desert, decked up and strutting with ease and grace on the majestic Rajpath, truly a sight to behold. Being led by Deputy Commandant Khansham Singh. Oh, these regal camels, awesome camels, ships of the desert, dependable companions in the inhospitable terrains of Rajasthan and the run of Kutch. The camel-mounted troops have been instrumental in successfully tracking down notorious smugglers and extremists. The motto of the BSF, duty unto death. These are striking images of the Republic Day Parade, 72nd Republic Day Parade 2021. And these are the images which stay with us for posterity. Indeed, Tanvi. And next I see the only band of its kind in the world, the camel-mounted band of the Border Security Force being led by Bandmaster Sub-Inspector Bodh Raj playing the tune Hum Hai Seema Suraksha Bal Ladies and gentlemen, if you thought that the border security force men were walking in unison and marching in unison, you should have seen the camels. Step by step with their tassels and their beads and their mirrors, it's a sight to see. These images stay with one for long and the BSF camel contingent now making its way past the main saluting days. The guests here all enjoying these beautiful ships of the desert as they make their way past the main saluting days.
And marching now in front of us is the contingent of the National Security Guard, NSG, popularly known as the Black Cat Commandos. The force was raised in 1984. The NSG selects the best of its officers and men from the Indian Army, as well as from various Central Armed Police Forces. The contingent is singing the NSG song, Hum Hena! Hai na Hindustan, hum rang rang hain, phir bhi sang hain, teen rang ka ek nishan. Dressed in black, black of course, and black beanie caps. Let's listen to them. The motto of the National Security Guard, Sarvatra Sarvottam Suraksha. National Security Guard's armoured tactical vehicles now on display. In fact, National Security Guard is keeping a constant vigil at the security arrangements of this year's parade as well. Their booth is right on top of our booth. Right? And we also see the K-9 contingent of the National Security Guard. The canines are also very smartly looking at the crowds and the crowds are waving at them. It is indeed a very, very disciplined force, the National Security Guard, a force that every Indian is so proud of. And now comes the National Cadet Corps Boys Marching Contingent. It comprises of 100 young and smart senior division cadets led by senior under officer Ranjit Singh Gujar of the NCC Directorate Rajasthan. NCC boys very smartly salute the Honorable President of India, the Rajput, and following the NCC marching contingent is the combined military band uh, consisting of uh, musicians from Bombay Engineer Group Center, Kharki, and the Army Service Corps North, led by Naib Subedar G.J. Bin. Next, Honorable President of the country, Sri Ramnath Kovin, will receive the salute from NCC Girls Marching Contingent. Senior Under Officer Samruthi Harshal Sant of the NCC Directorate Maharashtra is proudly leading the NCC contingent consisting of 100 senior wing cadets. And after the NCC girls marching contingent, coming up is the contingent of the National Service Scheme, NSS. The contingent comprising 100 volunteers being led by Sri Abhijit Bhui from West Bengal Directorate. The motto of the National Service Scheme, not me, but you. Trust of the National Service Scheme movement to develop the personality of the student youth through community service. The organization has completed its 51 years and rendered yeoman service in various national policies and programs. Following the National Service Scheme marching contingent was the Master Pipes and Drums Band led by Subedar Major Tak Bahadur Rana of the 39 Gorkha Trading Center who were playing the tune Almora. 
Yes. And uh, now, Tanvi, after the wonderful parade and the marching contingents, the massed pipes, drums, the National Cadet Corps, the NSG, the National Service Volunteers, who all presented a wonderfully eye-catching march pass. Now it is time moving away from India's military might to our age-old historical and cultural sites, the ethos of India. And the first tableau we can see on the Rajpath is Jule Ladakh. Yes, uh, coming up is first state tableau, I mean UT and states combined. Ladakh. Ladakh's tableau is depicting the iconic Thikse Monastery located on top of a hill in Thikse in Leh district and is one of the most visited tourist sites in the region. It also features the Indian Astronomical Observatory located in the Hanle region near Ladakh. In the middle portion of this tableau there is a yak there. And in the front portion is the replica of Lord Buddha in Adi Mudra. Rajpath resonating with Om Mane Padme Hum and following the beautiful tableau of Ladakh is the tableau from the state of Gujarat depicting the Sun Temple at Mudhera in Mehsana situated on the banks of the river Pushpavati. The Sun Temple was built by King Bhima I of the Chalukya dynasty. It was built well before the Konak Sun Temple in Orissa. The temple complex has three components Guda Mandap, the Shrine Hall, Sabha Mandap the assembly hall and Kunda, the reservoir. The halls have intricately carved exterior and pillars with young girls and women performing the traditional Tippani folk dance on to atop the tableau. Our rich cultural heritage and diversity on display here on our 72nd Republic Day here at Rajpath and Kaushik. What's yes, our next presentation here? Absolutely. After Garvi Gujarat, it is now time for this jewel from Northeast Assam. Assam is depicting its uh, very important tea industry, which is about 172 years old. Tea is the state drink of Assam. And we can see Jhumur dancers on the tableau and also we see the state emblem of the Assam state, a one-horned rhino and a baby rhino. What a sight indeed. Assam last year won the best state tableau award. We'll have to wait and see who wins it this year. And now let's head to the land that belongs to the three jewels of Carnatic music, Tamil Nadu. The replicas of Shore Temple, Arjuna's Penance and Nakul Sehdev Ratha are part of this tableau. Bharat Natyam dancers are now going to enthrall the audience. The Shore Temple is so named because it overlooks the shore of Bay of Bengal, an outstanding example of Dravidan architecture on display here. <laughs> 
And from Shaw Temple, we go a little bit up north to the land of the Bhakti movement. The next tableau from the state of Maharashtra, highlighting the influence of Bhakti movement, which brought a great change in the religious beliefs of the people in Maharashtra. The first part of the tableau, showing statue of Sant Gyaneshwar, one of the great saints and Marathi poets of India, who travelled over Maharashtra and preached Samant and Sambhav. The middle part of the tableau depicting the historic meeting between Sant Tukaram Maharaj and Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, a convergence of Bhakti and Shakti. And uh, the Rajput resonating with the chants for Vithoba Panduranga Vithal from this lovely tableau of uh, the Western Indian state of Maharashtra. And uh, coming next is uh, this uh, tableau from Dev Bhumi, that is Uttarakhand, known as the land of gods. It is home to the holy river Ganga. And the front part of the tableau shows the state animal, the musk deer the state bird Monal and the state flower Brahmakamal. We also see the replica of the famous Kedarnath temple and the replica of Nandi, the bull, the vehicle of Lord Shiva, the destroyer. <laughs> The rare portion of the tableau shows uh, the divine rock that is said to have stood in the way of the devastating floods and which saved the Kedarnath Shrine in the disaster of 2013. Indeed, Kaushik, and from Dev Bhumi, we go to the land of the splendorous sounds of folk music to the state of Chhattisgarh. The tableau here depicting the folk instruments used in the tribal areas of Chhattisgarh. The front portion has Dhankul, musical instrument, used on the occasion of special rituals such as Tija Jagar and Lakshmi Jagar. The middle portion depicting musical instruments Todi and Tuhuri, while the rear part displaying a male playing a drum while performing the traditional Gaur dance. What strong visual appeal this tableau of Chhattisgarh has. Indeed, Kandhi, indeed. In fact, uh, if you look, look at it closely, this tableau is inspired and nourished by nature. The folk music still existing in its pristine form in the customs and festivals of the state of Chhattisgarh. Next is the tableau from the land of five rivers, Punjab, celebrating the 400th birth anniversary of Shri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji which is going to fall later this year. Shri Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji was not just a principled and fearless warrior, but also a learned spiritual scholar and poet. And when he was beheaded around his neck, the words that were found written were Sardiya Siranadiya, meaning sacrifice yourself in martyrdom, but do not ever surrender. He spread Guru, Dev, Guru Nanak Dev Ji's eternal message of love, peace, equality and brotherhood.
another rare part of this tableau shows Gurudwara Shri Rakab Ganj Sahib, the site of cremation of Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji after his martyrdom in November 1675. Indeed, a divine and serene aura permeating through this tableau on this hallowed, iconic Rajpath on our 72nd Republic Day. And following the brilliant tableau from Punjab is the eco-friendly Atmanirbhar tableau from the state of Tripura. The tableau with handicrafts design of bamboo and cane presenting the fascinating aura of the architectural marvel of Tripura Royals, displaying the Ujjayanta Palace of the Tripura Royals, one of the biggest bas reliefs at Unakoti, along with various other structures that make the state of Tripura a favoured destination for our tourists. The state of Tripura's tableau now passing in front of the main saluting days here at Rajpath. And uh, Apoorv, of course, uh, Tripura is also the home of India's ace tennis player Som Dev, Dev Burman. And uh, from uh, Tripura, we go to a uh, neighboring state. And uh, following Tripura's tableau is the tableau from the state of West Bengal, which is depicting the theme Shobuj Shathi, Wheels of Change, or the Green Companion. This is a state government scheme which is aimed at increasing access to higher education through distribution of bicycles to all students in, who study in classes 9 to 12 across 12,000 government and government-aided schools in the state. And uh, the tableau also played uh, some memorable Tagore song talking about the youthfulness of the students who were riding the bicycles. The rear of the tableau showcases Howrah's iconic Howrah Bridge or the Vivekananda Setu. Indeed, and following the tableau from West Bengal is the tableau from the neighboring state of Sikkim depicting the Pang Labsol festival, which is unique to the state of Sikkim. The Pang Labsol festival basically aims at paying homage to Mount Kanchanjanga, the guardian deity of Sikkim, who is believed to have been protecting this holy land since ages. The colourful festival, replete with elaborate rituals, now passing by on the main saluting days. A thrilling dance performance by the monks and lamas accompanying the tableau of the state of Sikkim. The warrior dance being performed being called Pang Tod Cham that aims at invoking the guardian deity Mount Kanchanjanga. And next on display at Rajpath is the cultural city of Uttar Pradesh, Ayodhya, the birthplace of Sri Ram the epitome of Sanatan Sanskriti all over the world. The front part of the tableau depicts Maharishi Valmiki, shown here composing the Ramayana. In the middle part of the tableau, the under construction Sri Ram Mandir is on display. And the Grand Deepotsav of Ayodhya, which has consistently made records since the year 2017, is in the sides of this tableau. Uh, 
And uh, following Uttar Pradesh is the tableau of uh, Delhi, the national capital territory. The tableau showcases the redevelopment of Shah Jahanabad or what is known as Chandni Chowk, the walled city of Delhi. Chandni Chowk is uh, a mix of old and new and one has to go to Chandni Chowk to feel its pulsating rhythm. Here we see the favorite snacks that are available in Chandni Chowk, people riding cycles, young, old, and also the traditional businessmen who frequent the area, that is milkmen, golgappa walas, and whatnot. Also, we see the red fort at the front of the tableau and uh, also the various gurudwaras, churches, temples showing religious harmony yes. of the national capital territory of Delhi. And the masjid as well and we heard the chant of Allahu Akbar. And what I make of this tableau, Kaushik, is one of my college professors used to say, Thoda sa Bharat aapke ghar roz aata hai. Meaning a little bit of India comes to your house every day, be it your milkman, your rag picker, or maybe the one who delivers your newspaper. We are grateful to all these essential workers. Absolutely. And following the tableau from the state of Delhi is this tableau from the state of Karnataka. The tableau depicting the Matanga Hills, the origin of the Hanuman as per the legends, the coronation ceremony of Krishna Devaraya, the mural visuals from Hazara Rama Temple, Vijayanagara has now been carved out as the 31st district of Karnataka. The tableau of Karnataka now passing by in front of the main saluting days. Ladies and gentlemen, the Matanga and Anjanadari hills located close to Hampi are believed to be the birthplaces of Hanuman and Sugriv. Legend also describes this place as the meeting point between Sri Ram and Hanuman. The beautiful tableau has passed by the main saluting days, the tableau of the state of Karnataka. And next we witness the splendor of the tableau of God's own country, Kerala. Well, uh, the word Kera in Kerala means coconut and this uh, tableau is depicting the coir of Kerala, the golden fiber that is obtained from the coconut husk. So two giant coconuts are kept on this tableau. There are Kathakali dancers swaying in soft motion and uh, there's a person at the rear end with a fishing net also there. Well, Kathakali is an art form that performs battle between virtue and evil and the victory of virtue over evil. Coming next is the tableau from Andhra Pradesh that depicts the world famous Lepakshi temples. Lepakshi is an architectural monolithic marble. It's one of the finest examples of the Vijayanagara architectural style. Much of the temple is built on a low rocky hill called Kurmasailam. The temple was built by the brothers Virupanna and Viranna. The temple is laid out in three sections, Mukhamandapa, Arthamandapa and the Garbhagriya. There is also a Kalyana Mandapam. The Lepakshi temple has the finest specimen of mural paintings of the Vijayanagara kings.
and following the tableau from Andhra Pradesh is the tableau from the biggest state in the northeast Arunachal Pradesh with the theme east meets west showing the two tribes the Wanchos who believe in animism who reside in the Patkai hills of the Longding district in East Arunachal and the Monpas who follow Buddhism and reside in Tawang in West Arunachal The front part of the tableau from Arunachal Pradesh showing Buddhist monks in traditional settings. Mongpas are known for the thangka painting, carpet weaving and woodwork who celebrate the Losar and Ajilamu festival. So with that tableau from Arunachal Pradesh, we culminate the segment on states and UTs tableau. And uh, next on display will be the different tableaus from the ministries and departments of the country. Coming in front of us right now is the tableau from the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology depicting the theme Digital Bharat, Atmanirbhar Bharat. In the middle portion of this tableau, our nation's hero for the COVID-19 pandemic, Arogya Setu app is shown and yes tanvi we have proved to the world that india is a atmanirbhar nation and the arogya setu app was indeed of great help during the covid-19 pandemic following the digital india tableau is the tableau of the ministry of labor and employment the four labor codes that were passed by the government uh, in the recent past has been of great importance for protecting the labors. The tractor shows happiness of the labor, especially among the wage labors, as they get benefited from the code. And also the yellow cap on the laborer's head depicts the social security, wage security, and health security. <laughs> And India's labor force also deserves as much respect and recognition from everyone due for their stellar role during the pandemic. Labor Minister Santosh Kumar Gangwar, who is present just before us, is loudly cheering the tableau. Apoor and Kaushik, uh, India, we all know, is a land of great linguistic plurality. It's almost, I mean, it, it is impossible to know all the languages and dialects of the country. So when we visit different parts of our land, what comes handy is the sign language. One sign, one sign language is being depicted in our next tableau, that is the tableau of Department of Empowered, Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities. It is highlighting the unifying nature of the Indian sign language and the small dancers, uh, the small artists will play a small sign language dance for us. And up next is the tableau of the Ministry of Ayush Government of India showcasing Ojo Bharat, Tejo Bharat, Immune India, Active India. Ayush, a name synonym, synonymous with wellness, it has established the role of research and production of natural immunity boosters. Acharya Charak is shown documenting the Charak Samhita, while the rear part of the tableau showcasing a scientist working in laboratory on research and development of medicines. The ministry carried out citizen engagement and information dissemination on a large scale in the wake of COVID-19, doing stellar work under the guidance of Shripad Yeso Nayak. We wish him a speedy recovery as he recuperates from an accident. His ministry's tableau now passing by the main saluting days, Ojo Bharat, Tejo Bharat.
immune india active india we as a nation are in the process of the largest vaccination drive for covid-19 and we hope that in the nearest time possible the whole of the country is covered under it yes absolutely tanvi what you say is of great significance and india is also supplying vaccines to the world and now we see this lovely tableau from the central reserve police force a professional ops force with human sensitivity the tableau depicts the legacy valor and the human face of the force in line with its motto service and integrity the central reserve police force is deployed primarily in jammu and kashmir and in left wing extremism lwe areas to maintain peace and preserve the unity and integrity of the country they also conduct many health camps provide schooling for children in lwe districts and carry out major such activities to help the people we see a bust of the iron man of india sardar vallabhbhai patel at the rear of the tablet Well last year was a challenging one for all of us while the ministry of ayush taught us all how to make the kada next we have the department of biotechnology focused on creating an ecosystem for the made in india covid vaccine shots so yes, there are tanvi you are absolutely right and when the biotechnology tableau has come we see the entire council of ministers especially the home minister shri amit shah applauding cheerily to the biotechnology tableau and so is honorable prime minister and the president of india there's a loud cheer of applause from uh, the enclosures the audience are really some of them are even standing to dedicate themselves to this uh, tableau the service to the nation these scientists and researchers have done over the last year to decipher this virus and make the national covid-19 vaccine not only for our countrymen but for people all around the world for we are giving these vaccine shots to countries like nepal bhutan brazil as part of india's diplomatic initiative vaccine maitri indeed a proud moment for us all here on rashpath in new delhi up next the tableau of the indian coast guard showcasing two of the several Indian Coast Guard vessels that are capable of undertaking multifarious roles to protect the national maritime interest in a vast maritime zones the officer saluting the days from the tableau is deputy commandant alok upadhyay the tableau of the indian coast guard ladies and gentlemen the front part of the tableau depicting the indian coast guard air cushion vehicle or hovercraft in action that is preparing to slide to sea from the seashore to respond to an emergency situation samudra prahari in the truest sense of the term ready relevant responsive maritime force that is the indian coast guard the are the vanguards of a maritime security too and coming up next is this uh, lovely tableau of the ministry of information and broadcasting with the theme vocal for local atmanirbhar bharat make in india 2.0 the move towards a 5 trillion dollar economy vocal for local local for global is the mantra this tableau endeavors to connect with all especially the youth through a contemporary look and feel using 3d elements and led displays the brand of khadi india also being displayed on this tableau there is an e car electronic car in the middle with the sign saying go green go electric 
the logos of Doordarshan and All India Radio endeavor to propagate the theme of vocal for local as a Jan Andolan or a people's movement. As we celebrate this 72nd Republic Day, today we honor the efforts of Sardar Vallabhai Patel who had consolidated the whole of the country into one union. And our next tableau also connects places and connects people. This is the tableau of the Border Roads Organization, Seema Sadak Sangathan. We cut mountains but connect hearts. This is a famous roadside slogan of the BRO, indicating the true nature of its work and unity in diversity of this great nation. The world's highest motorable road at Umlingla Pass at an altitude of 19,300 feet in Ladakh is a witness of the indomitable spirit of BRO's personnel operating in difficult terrain of the country. And following the tableau of the BRO is the tableau from the Central Public Works For Department, India, CPWD. The CPWD offering a tribute to the martyrs of Indian Army, the tableau showcasing the India located astride Rajpath, the National War Memorial, stands upright on front of the tractor to honor the Indian armed forces. It's a riot of colors bedecked with flowers of different hues and colors. The tableau of the CPWD passing by a poignant moment as it passes by in front of the main saluting days. Honorable Rashtrapati and Honorable President both appreciating this beautifully made tableau. Absolutely amazing to look at. Yes, it is perhaps the most photogenic tableau that we have seen since morning and coming up next is the tableau of the Ministry of Culture which is heralding the 75th year of India's independence which we are going to celebrate in a grand manner in the year 2022. The lion capital of Sarnath is in the foreground that symbolizes the contributions of King Ashoka and his idea of a nation state. Resting among the columns is the Indian Parliament. It is a tribute to the countless unsung heroes of India's freedom struggle. The tableau depicts Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose as one of the tallest and most iconic freedom fighters of the country. As we all informed you that the 125th birth anniversary celebrations of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose began on Parakram Devas 23rd January 2021. The soldiers accompanying the tableau represents the Indian National Army which galvanized the aspirations of the people throughout the country during the freedom struggle. And now Tanvi, that also brings us to the end of the tableaus of the states, the union territories and the departments of the government of India. Yes, uh, to add to that tableau on Ministry of Culture, well, Netaji's life, work and decisions are an inspiration for all of us. He used to say, it does not matter who among us will live to see India free. It is enough that India shall be free and that we shall give our all to make her free. And now on display, the children's pageant who will perform their mesmerizing folk dances for all of us, their talent and ability now on display before the highest authority, the President of India, Honorable Sri Ramnath Kovind. So coming up first is Delhi Tamil Association Schools who will perform the Tamil Nadu folk dance. We all know Tamil Nadu has rich tradition of not just classical dances but folk arts and crafts. The conduct of the folk dances on occasions of temple festivals and community functions gives mirth and merry to the villagers. The students carrying the prop, props of peacock feathers on their backs and they are carrying dupattas on 
an arrangement of a pole right in the middle slowly swing in motion diverse folk dances of Tamil Nadu and their traditional dresses are fascinating all of us at Rajpath these are 127 students of Delhi Tamil schools they are actually displaying the rainbow colors for all of us Kaushik yes, absolutely Tanvi it's a right of colors you know and uh, kudos to all these children of course they are all age 15 and above due to the covid protocols but they are really performing very well their students the students and the teachers have put in a lot of efforts to you know put to this dance together yes and they are drawing a lot of applause from the crowds that are assembled here and also from the vip galleries and what beautiful formations they are making right in the middle they are now tying these dupattas and making a beautiful formation it's a very rich state the state of tamil nadu and uh, these students from the seven delhi tamil education association schools have really done their institution proud yes. following the DTEA school's uh, performance of uh, Tamil Nadu folk dance is uh, Government Girls Senior Secondary School B2 Yamuna Vihar Delhi who will be performing another dance performance entitled Hum Fit To India Fit. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Fit India movement on the occasion of National Sports Day on 29th of August 2019. It's a nationwide campaign that aims at encouraging people to include physical activities and sports in their everyday life. In the creation of a new India, Milkar Badhe Ao Manzil Kior Lai Fit India Ka Dor. Students. One thing that is very interesting here about uh, this particular dance presentation is that uh, some of the students are doing yoga, some are doing aerobics, some are doing dance, others are indulging in sports. As it says, hum fit to India fit. Indeed. Choose whatever you want to choose, but do some physical exercise every day to stay fit. Indeed. Yoga is not just to keep yourself physically fit, but to be mindful and be aware of the present moment. Well, all these girls and boys are wearing light magenta and fluorescent colored dresses. All of them are carrying ribbons in their hands and some of them are also carrying hoops. And right now I can see one asan being performed by a section of this school's students. It's indeed a very eye-catching presentation. While one does some asanas, the other group is uh, busy doing exercises and uh, the students are really enthralling the crowds here. The VIP saluting days is also watching this uh, performance very carefully and energetically wow. they are applauding these children it's All indeed a wonderful yeah. presentation by the girls of the government girls senior secondary school b2 yamuna vihar delhi who presented hum fit to india fit all of them bowed their heads uh, right at the end of this uh, dance as if uh, 
bowing to mother earth because when we perform dance the first and the last thing that we do is touch mother earth for we take her permission to dance on it next we have the eastern zonal cultural center from kolkata performing the most beautiful folk dance of kalahandi in odisha the baja sal this dance is related to the marriage occasions here baja means the instrument a drum played in the dance and sal means the place where these instruments are played this is a dance that is performed generally before the marriage rituals 80 folk artists of the eastern zonal cultural center kolkata are presenting the folk dance baja sal such foot tapping music yes tanvi and odisha is a very culturally rich state as all other states are but odisha's dance form especially the uh, odissi is one of india's most popular dance forms and looking at the bajasal dance also we can say that this is also a very mesmerizing dance form and from the district of kalahandi in odisha the performers from the eastern zonal cultural center in kolkata oh. are drawing lot of applause from the crowds and also the distinguished guests here at rajpath this is of course a moment these 80 folk artists are going to remember for a very long time to come yes what crisp moves on display there wonderful all of them looking towards the direction of this dance performance yes these students will remember these memories forever and ever indeed republic day parade is thus an event to witness the folk and the regional dance forms from the hinterland and tanvi many people especially delhiites wait one year to catch a glimpse of uh, these uh, performances here at rajpath and uh, listeners of all india radio will have to visualize these wonderful art forms because radio allows you radio gives you that imagination yes to just come here and enjoy the ambiance yes and hope we are doing a good job for our listeners for them to imagine the ambiance here the reverberating atmosphere the feelings of patriotism gratitude for our great land next we have students 38 boys and 54 girls of mount abu public school rohini delhi and vidya bharati school rohini delhi who are all set to invoke the entire country india to build an atmanirbhar bharat of our dreams dressed in white dhotis and turquoise colored tunics they are depicting a very important message for all of us of being educated a yes. placard here says sab padhe sab bade and uh, tanvi this also talks about uh, the particular dance form it's a very evolved dance uh, presentation it talks about the new education policy that uh, lays more focus on overall education and just not by rote uh, just by rote learning, giving yes. uh, degrees the national education policy that was unveiled by prime minister shri narendra modi in uh, august last year is going to change the course of how education system is in india and uh, focus and emphasis will also be on primary education in mother language and uh, we also see now the beautiful mesmerizing performance by the students of the schools
Now the students are carrying the props they have got from their school. Covid vaccine shot there. Isro's replica there. A whiteboard depicting algebra equations. And everyone is clapping to motivate these dancers, young dancers. And now two dancers dressed differently in black bringing the prop they've got from their school which is of a satellite satellite uh, kaushik yes it's a satellite and also we can see two uh, children dressed as spacemen yes. and this is something you know which talks about the development process of india as uh, uh, economic power Wonderful. as a social power as an educational power and also as a space power after that uh, scintillating performance of uh, the dance known as uh, presentation which was uh, titled atmanirbhar bharat everyone is looking skywards because it is now time for the grand finale the piece the resistance the spectacular fly past by the indian air force and today is a very lovely sunny day i now take you over dear listeners to bhuvan apurv jha for the fly past over to you apurv thank you tanvi thank you kaushik ladies and gentlemen after those energy filled performances by our school children not that i expect but if anyone had any doubt on the adrenaline levels here at rajpath bear with me because in a short while from now the josh here will be through the roof the indian air force will be presenting a stupendous fly past here at rajpath in new delhi precision at tremendous speeds will be put on display and i'll bring to you all of that live on your radio sets and digital devices stay tuned to all india radio as the finest of the indian air force our pride our adversaries envy will be presenting an awe inspiring display of their devilry and precision ladies and gentlemen we are about to witness the grand finale of the republic day function and you'll be listening to that all of that live on all india radio and our official app news on air in a few moments from now thundering aircrafts will be performing aerobatics at precision at high speeds over rajpath here in new delhi the aircrafts will be flying over rashtrapati bhavan atop us near the main saluting days and then above india gate and then out of our eye line and i can hear and spot at uh, the horizon the first formation the rudra formation comprising of a dakota aircraft flanked by two mi 17 helicopters flying in wick formation coming in hot and heavy the formation being led by group captain menon and wing commander ss gehlot flying the dakota of the indian air force heritage flight history of indianados will remember that the dakotas were instrumental in airlifting troops and supplies into the kashmir valley to repel invaders from across the border in 1947 they played a significant role in the tangel air drop leading to the liberation of bangladesh and there they come the dakota has been flanked by the two mi 17s coming in hot and heavy over rajpath here in new delhi all eyes pointing skywards the dakota in the middle the two helicopters by the side There they go can you hear the roar of these aircrafts and helis dear listeners There they go just above the main saluting days presenting an aerial salute to the supreme commander of the Indian Armed Forces honorable president of India Sri Ramnath Kovind The next formation the Sudarshan formation consisting of one Chinook and two Mi 17 helicopters in wick formation the chinook a heavy lift twin rotor helicopter which has enhanced the indian air force's lift capability across a range of military and human assistance and disaster relief operations the chinook flying in at a speed of 160 km per hour at a height of 60 meters above us being led by group captain siddharth rawat the commanding officer of the 126 helicopter flight the other formation members wing commander rohit singh thakur and wing commander nikhil mehrotra of the 129 helicopter unit and there come the chinook the chinook being flanked by the two mi 17 helicopters in wick formation if any of you if you have seen the movie black hawk down you'll recognize this massive aircraft this massive 
mean machine of the Indian Air Force. I hope the roar of these jets and helicopters is transmitting on your radio sets and digital devices. All eyes pointing upwards, everyone wanting to get a piece of these mean machines of the Indian Air Force in their memories and on their mobile phones. The next formation coming in, the Rakshak attack helicopter formation, consisting of one Mi-35 helicopter and four Apache helicopters in VIC formation, flying in furiously from the side of Rashtrapati Bhavan over us, near the main saluting days, the Rakshak formation being led by Group Captain Raj Shekhar Reddy at a speed of 180 kilometers per hour, and they go flying above us. The Rakshak formation, one Mi-35 helicopter and four Apache helicopters flying above us just now, being led by Group Captain Raj Shekhar Reddy, Group Captain Indumit Singh, Wing Commander Praveen, Wing Commander Anand Kumar Yadav, and Wing Commander Munit Dogra of the 125 and 137 helicopter units. The next formation, the Bheem formation, comprising three C-130J aircrafts in WIG formation. The C-130J capable of special ops and operating from remote places with short and semi-prepared surfaces. The formation being led by Group Captain Mandeep Chahal, the commanding officer of the 87th Squadron, also known as the Raiding Raptors. There come the three C-130Js, they're massive aircrafts. You have to see it to believe it. They're humongous in size. As they pass above us near the main saluting days here at Rajpath on our 72nd Republic Day. The captains of the other two aircrafts were Wing Commander Ankit Raj and Wing Commander Naveen Chand. After the C-130Js, we await the arrival of the Netra, our eye in the sky. An indigenous airborne early warning and control aircraft with state of the art state-of-the-art early warning radar and a host of advanced electronic warfare equipment all indigenously designed and developed by the DRDO a shining example of Atma Nirbhar Bharat as pledged by Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi the aircraft can detect enemy aircraft up to ranges of 400 kilometers and direct their own fighter aircraft to destroy them the AEWC being flown by Group Captain P Singh being flanked by the two Sukhoi Mark 1 fighter aircrafts being led by squadron leader T. Ali and wing commander S. Adhikari formation flow in at a speed of 420 kilometers per hour at a height of 300 meters above us Netra our eye in the sky making an appearance on Republic Day the 72nd and now we await the arrival of the Garuda formation comprising one C-17 Globemaster with two MiG-29s and two Sukhoi-30s Mark I aircraft in WIC formation. The C-17 is a heavy lift, long-range, strategic airlift aircraft. Induction of the C-17 has changed the dynamics of strategic mobility and reach of the Indian Air Force. The C-17 being captained by Group Captain Pranav Sisodia, the commanding officer of the 81 Squadron, flanking him, Group Captain Kapil Deep Singh and Wing Commander Ankung Hakim, white plumes, on both sides of the C-17, it's a massive aircraft and the sky is white, everyone's neck spraining from the left to right, neck spasms don't matter tonight, do they? When the finest, the best, the meanest of the Indian Air Force is on work, you watch, you get inspired and that's what's happening here with all present here on this momentous day, on this auspicious day, on our 72nd Republic Day. After the transporters, now come the attackers, the destroyers. The next formation, a club formation with one Rafale and two Jaguar deep penetration strike aircrafts with two MiG-29 air superiority fighters in WIC formation. Flying in at a speed of, and hold your breath, 780 kilometers per hour. The debut appearance of Rafale in front of the Indian public, being led by Group Captain Rohit Kataria. The jets, can you hear the roar of the Rafals and the MiG-29's listeners? That's the debut appearance of Rafal in front of the Indian public. The jet capable of striking deep into enemy territory and their hearts. 
The next formation, the Trinetra formation comprising of three Sukhoi 30s Mark 1s. I can spot the aircrafts coming above us. They will split outwards and upwards, forming a Trishul in the sky, Shiva's trident. The formation being led by Group Captain A.K. Mishra, Commanding Officer of the 15th Squadron, with Squadron Leader R.C. Kulkarni. The captains of the other two aircrafts, Wing Commander Karan Dev and Flight Lieutenant A.S. Dhimsa. Squadron Leader H.J. Singh and Squadron Leader Shobhit Mishra. There come the three Sukhoi Mark 30s. Coming in fast, hot and heavy, over the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And there they come, there they come. Veering off in three different directions. As potent, as versatile as Shiva's trident. Can you hear the roar of the Jets listeners? The three Sukhoi Mark 30s. And here come the next formation, the acclaimed Sarang team of the Indian Air Force. The acclaimed, the world famous, the world renowned, the Sarang team of the Indian Air Force. Being led by Group Captain Girish Kumar, the commanding officer of the Sarangs. The three ordinary colors merging together extraordinarily to ignite the mind, the body and the soul of every Indian. The Sarang team saluting the nation's courage, peace and prosperity with tricolor. The trailing tricolor saluting the nation's sovereignty. And now for the PSD resistance this morning, the culmination of the parade as a single Rafale aircraft flying at a speed of 900 kilometers per hour will carry out the vertical charlie and here it goes. Here it goes up in the sky. The Rafale going up. Carrying out a series of maneuvers. Oh my God, he's still going up. My eyes will fail me, but my spirit won't. The Rafale going up and up, carrying out multiple roles, giving a befitting salute to the motto of the Indian Air Force, Nabhasparsham Deeptam. I hope you caught the roar of the Rafale, dear listeners. If ever there was a mean machine of the Indian Air Force, this is it. The debut appearance of Rafale in front of the Indian public on a Republic Day here at Rajpath in front of Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind, Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, Defence Minister, Sri Rajnath Singh, all applauding the mean machine that is Rafale. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be most apt to say that for most of us, the sky is the limit, but for our brave airmen, the sky is their playground. The flying jets and helis of the Indian Air Force are impressive, but even more impressive are the men and women in these mean machines. Countless hours of practice, spirit of service and dedication, so that you and I remain safe and protected. We remain ever grateful to you, our brave airmen, for your service. And before I hand over back to the main saluting days, let me conclude by saying that we are as much as a nation of Mahatma Gandhi and Lord Buddha, as we are a nation of Veer Bhagat Singh and Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Let no evil eye be cast upon our country, for our protectors in the air, on the land and sea, remain ever steadfast and vigilant. And on that note, I'll take you back to the main saluting days to my colleagues Tanvi and Kaushik. Over to you guys. Thank you, Apurv. There's an excitement galore at the Republic Day Parade right now, thanks to these brave heart pilots and their flying machines. So with the fly past literally being the high note that concludes the Republic Day Parade at Rajpath, what a display it has been here, right, Kaushik? Yes, absolutely, uh, Tanvi, and uh, what uh, Apurva said about the fly past was indeed something which every Indian is uh, proud of today. The Indian Air Force, the vanguard of uh, our skies, have set an example, and now they have the fourth generation mean machines, the Rafale, which will take care of India's uh, air defense systems. It will bolster our defense systems and the fly past once again, you know, reinforces the indomitable Indian spirit. The fly past also showcases India's progress from 1950 
to 2021 as a modern nation which is deeply rooted in its cultural ethos and cultural values. Today we have seen the spectacular march past by the Indian Armed Forces, the eclectic cultural pageantry by different states and union territories as well as government departments and also the enthusiasm of our school children and the icing on the cake was the fly past by the Rafael. Yes. But all good things need to come to an end and we see the arrival of the President's bodyguards. Kaushik, what uh, seems to be the end is often the beginning and uh, slowly approaching uh, the saluting days is uh, the President's uh, bodyguards now. They are again marching in perfect synchronization. What a wonderful Republic Day parade it has been in times, such testing times of COVID-19. Everybody here has followed the COVID-19 protocols and is still maintaining the preventive protocols. And now it is time once again for the national anthem. Yes, the glistening blue sky now welcoming hundreds of balloons in the tricolors of the national flag rising as if towards a higher calling as the shades of freedom take wings carrying with them the aspirations of a billion plus Indians we recognize, cherish and rejoice in all that makes us truly Indian. Indeed, Tanvi, and uh, I can spot uh, Honorable President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind, being accompanied by Honorable uh, Vice President, Sri M. Venkaya Naidu, along with uh, Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, slowly but surely making their way down the flight of stairs from the main saluting days. An event of this magnitude being attended by all the high dignitaries of the country. And we brought to you all of this live on All India Radio, from this momentous, majestic Rajpath, Defence uh, Minister Sri Rajnath Singh has reached at the base of the main saluting days where the three service chiefs, General Bipil Rawat, Defence Secretary, all stand in attention, waiting for the arrival of Honourable President of India as the presidential bodyguard waits. The President making his way down the flight of stairs, everyone up on their feet, it's a momentous day, it's an auspicious day. It's our 72nd Republic Day, which we brought to you live on your radio sets and your digital devices on All India Radio. People waving out to the high dignitaries, President acknowledging and waving them back as he makes his way to his presidential limousine. Yes, Apurva, the Honorable President of India, flanked by Vice President Sri M. Venkaya Naidu, and Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, the First Lady, Mrs. Savita Kovind, the Honorable President of India is now greeting the three service chiefs and the Chief of Defence Staff and uh, Raksha Mantri Sri Rajnath Singh. The Honorable President of India has now come to his vehicle and uh, 
he is exchanging once again a few pleasantries with uh, the vice president and uh, honorable prime minister as uh, prime minister greets the first lady mrs savita kovind and uh, the honorable president is yes. now doing a namaskar and uh, he is getting into his uh, vehicle this has indeed been a wonderful republic day celebrations here at rajpath keeping in mind the strict covid-19 protocols and it went as picture perfect as it could yes and rajpath once again resonating with the sound of hooves as the presidential cavalcade makes its way back to rashtrapati bhavan escorted by the presidential bodyguards these regal presidents bodyguards escort the supreme commander of the armed forces the president of india shri ramnath kovind back to the rashtrapati bhavan then we would it be wrong to say that this is a unique mixture of traditionalism and modernity as the presidential limousine is escorted by one of the oldest regiments of the indian armed forces as the presidential cavalcade surely but slowly makes its way back to the president's house that is rashtrapati bhavan atop raisina hill yes the striking images are a great reminder of our rich history and we all bow our heads in gratitude and love for our motherland indeed indeed we do and now i can spot honorable vice president shri m venkaiya naidu ji conversing with honorable prime minister as he prepares to leave in his vice presidential car cade the cars slowly pulling up to the base of the main saluting dais honorable vice president in conversation with honorable raksha mantri and honorable prime minister the three service chiefs and general bipin rawat along with defense secretary dr ajay kumar all stand in attention near the base of the tricolor at the base of the main saluting dais as we await the departure of honorable vice president shri m venkaiya naidu ji yes and uh, the vice presidential vehicle has also arrived at the saluting base and uh, vice president still having some conversation with the prime minister and the raksha mantri and now both the dignitaries have greeted the honorable vice president of india who once again does a namaskar and gets into his vehicle this protocol is uh, interesting to see and it is maintained very well by the dignitaries here at rajpath year after year the vice presidential motorcade is now leaving the rajpath and uh, the vice president has been escorted by his security personnel and uh, his vehicle is now moved from the saluting days indeed the black cars shining against the cool morning sun the vice presidential cavalcade has left the base of the main saluting days where right now are standing honorable prime minister shri narendra modi in his orange safa along with honorable raksha mantri as they are engaged in an animated conversation honorable prime minister now as has been the ritual over the past few years take some time to meet and greet all of those attendees who take time out to and brave the severe winter chill to attend the celebration of our democratic ideals and aspirations the celebration of democracy the celebration of the book that binds us from kupwara to kat godam from kach to kathiawad from kamrup to calcutta the constitution of india honorable prime minister greeting and waving out to people on both sides of rajpath people looking to capture these moments in their mobile phones security personnel ensuring that all social distancing guidelines are being followed as this is not a normal year this is a republic day in a covid year however a hat tip to all those organizations that have worked together in absolute sync over the last few months Yes, to make this event a pos possible Isn't yes to make only? this event success a success and as we speak uh, 
the Delhi police personnel, the bodyguards, of course, the bodyguards of the Prime Minister are all vigilant and are all trying to make sure th that this event goes hassle-free. And uh, the Honorable Prime Minister of India is just crossing the All India Radio commentary booth and waving to the public, this is a Prime Minister who is a leader of the masses and he always reaches out to them through various innovative ideas. And this is something that which we have seen, and Apur, you yeah. mentioned, yes. since uh, his uh, taking up the office of the Prime Minister in 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has always remained connected Indeed. with the people and always makes it a point to mix with the crowds wherever he goes. He is also worn his mask since morning while sitting at the VIP saluting days and now he has gone to almost uh, the end of uh, Rajpath still waving cheerily to the people and, uh, and right in front of our booth uh, I can see Home Minister Amit Shah and uh, leaving with his wife Ms. Sonal Shah and slowly and steadily people are now leaving the enclosure right in front of us. Indeed, Tanvi, Honorable Prime Minister, he was just here and in a few seconds he is almost 50 meters away from us. And, and I can the External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. Jayashankar, Road Transport and Highways Minister, Sri Nitin Gadkari, and others are also now leaving the saluting days towards the podium. Yes. Uh, and uh, Tanvi and Kaushik, would it be wrong to say that occasionally a publicized event can cause a lump to rise in the throat due to an overwhelming feeling of national pride? But something that occurs more predictably is the annual parade and pageantry at Rajpath on Republic Day. We listen to it on our radio sets, watch it on our televisions, not merely as an audience, but as participants in the exercise of nation building that we embarked upon collectively in 1950. Whether they act as nudges for introspection, guiding lights that illuminate our path, or milestones that measure our progress, Republic Day celebrations have had one thing in common, timelessness. What was relevant half a century ago still holds good today. This day has for long been the voice of our collective conscience, and so we would do well to remember that we are only listening to our own inner selves as we celebrate our 72nd Republic Day. Yes, absolutely. Apurv, with the display of India's military might and socio-economic development, despite the pandemic, India has carved a niche in the world. It's today a modern nation, yet deeply rooted in her traditional ethos and values. We, the citizens of India, once again need to solemnly affirm to abide by the Constitution of India and respect our nation's vibrant democracy and her institutions. As the noted Telugu poet Guruzada Parao had said, Deshamante Matikadoi, Deshamante Manusuloi. A nation is not made of mud and soil, a nation is made of people. As Swami Vivekananda said, and I quote, every nation has a message to deliver, a mission to fulfill, a destiny to reach. The message of India has been to guide humanity. Let us all pledge to carry this legacy forward. We from All India Radio and the Prasar Bharati Parivar once again convey our heartiest greetings to all Indians on the 72nd Republic Day. We also thank all our listeners for tuning in to this live presentation. On behalf of my fellow commentators, Bhuvan Apurva Jha, Tanvi Taneja and D. Andrew, members of our technical team, S. Vadivazagan, Balkishan Arun Kumar, S. D. Dhyani, Neeraj Tirki, Ashok Kumar Mishra, Subroto Malik, Nakul Kumar, Tajinder Singh, Babulal Meena, Rajesh Kumar, Kamal Singh, Prakash Chandra, Sumit Katiyar, Chunni Lal Chaudhary, Kailash Chandra Ran, Satish Sharma, Bridge Kishore, V. K. Sugathan, Sunil Kumar, Narendra Nath, Ripan Kumar, S. Minch, Sunny Joseph and Shantanu Ghosh, Program Team, Manohar Singh Rawat, Pramod Kumar, Nitish Kumar Aroda, Jagmohan Singh and Veena Pahadi. This is Kaushik Rai taking you back to the studios of All India Radio, Delhi. Namaskar. Jai Hind.